When I wake up, I know that you are with me every step of the way. You're strong enough, you're strong enough to handle any fear that I face. Even things that scare me, cause they seem too big. Even all the hard things that make me wanna quit. You're bigger than it all, and you're in charge of it. I don't feel so worried when I look to you, Jesus. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about courage while we take a look at the story of someone who faced a pretty dark night. Oh, and don't miss this. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about courage. That's being brave enough to do what you should do, even when you're afraid. Even when something unexpected happens. Unexpected? How do you feel about the dark? Uh, a little nervous. I mean, I, I can't see. Can we please have the lights back? Hey, hey, hey! Lots of people don't like the dark. So, I thought we could try something to make dark fun. Oh, laser tag! Pew, 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 pew! Or something kids can try at home? Flashlight tag? Pew, pew, pew. Or go in the dark slime. Oh, I've never made slime. Me neither. All righty then, let's, let's make, make it. it. Okay, what do we use for this experiment? All right, so we have clear school glue, water, baking soda, and glow powder. First, we put in the glue. Perfect. Next, we add the water. Yes! Next, baking soda. <laughs> and finally, we add the glow powder.
so pretty. And now we stir. And make sure you stir really good. Come on, Z, put some muscle in it. <laughs> that is not slime. Not yet, because we still need slime activator. Saline, my mom uses that to clean her contact <laughs> lenses. It contains borate ions. Glue is made of long chains of molecules called polymers that slide easily past each other. When borate ions are added, they cross-link the protein molecules in the glue so they can no longer slide easily past each other. So borate ions glue the glue? Pretty much. Cool. Let's see what happens. Slime activate. All right, I'll pour it, you stir. Oh, and... I can already feel it hardening. <laughs> So disgusting and weirdly satisfying. I know, right? Get the lights. Whoa. Look at it glow. That is so cool. Whoa. I want some. It's all slimy. Oh. So cool. Oh, it's everywhere. Not in my hands. Oh. I'm getting all of it. No. <laughs> Woo! Ah! <laughs> okay, the dark can be pretty fun. Yes, unless you are joined in the dark by extra big hungry cats. Is that a spoiler? Yes, it's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in book 27 of the Old Testament, Daniel. God had promised to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, the Israelites. God delivered them from slavery and led them to freedom in the land of Canaan. God gave the Israelites kings to lead them. But while some kings like David listened to God, many of the kings ignored God. These kings even led the people to worship false gods. And at last, God allowed the Israelites to be conquered by foreign nations. Yeah, some of the Israelites were even marched off as captives to Babylon. But one of these captives, a man named Daniel, still loved God and prayed to God every day. And Daniel is a hero of today's story. Let's go! Daniel was taken to Babylon as a young man, but even as a captive, he still stood up for the one true God. We won't make ourselves unclean by eating the king's food. Test us for 10 days. Give us only vegetables to eat. God blessed Daniel and made him strong and wise. That wisdom and courage gained Daniel a lot of respect, and he actually served as an advisor to several foreign kings over his lifetime. One of them was King Darius, who conquered Babylon. Now, when King Darius took charge, he placed 120 officials over the whole kingdom and put three governors over them. One of these three men was Daniel. Daniel was so trustworthy and did such a good job that Darius actually made plans to put Daniel in charge of the other two governors. So when these other two rulers found out about the plan, they were pretty angry. They decided to find something wrong with Daniel they could tell the king about. <laughs> but even though they spied on Daniel, they couldn't find a thing he'd done wrong. Not one single lie! Mm, but Daniel does have this thing about praying to his God. Three times a day like clockwork! The jealous governors and officials perfected a sneaky plan and took it to King Darius. King Darius, may you live forever! You're so incredibly amazing. We think you should make a special command. Uh, uh, what is it? For the next 30 days, no one in the whole kingdom can pray to anyone but you. I like it. And if they pray to someone else, they get thrown into a lion's den. Well, where do I sign? Oh, well, King Darius was so flattered that he gave orders for the law to be written down, and he signed it at once. And you have to know this. Once a law of the Medes and Persians was written down, it could not be changed, even by the king himself. 
When Daniel found out about the law, it would have been easy enough to change his routine and stop going home to pray every day. But Daniel's love for God was greater than his fear of lions. The next morning, as every morning, Daniel knelt in his room and prayed to God. Thank you that you are always with me, God. Help me honor you in everything I do. Daniel went to his room to pray again at noon and in the evening, even though he probably knew the other officials were watching him. And sure enough, they were delighted to find Daniel disobeying the king's law. Oh, they rushed off to the king as fast as they could. King Darius, didn't you sign an order that for 30 days, no one can pray to anyone but you? Huh? Oh, I, I did. Or they'd be thrown into a lion's den. <laughs> well, no one would risk it. <laughs> Except Daniel! He still prays to his god three times every day. When Darius realized he'd been trapped, he was very upset. He didn't want Daniel to be harmed, but even he couldn't find a way around the law. So at sunset, the king called for Daniel to be brought out and thrown in the lion's den. Daniel, uh, you always serve your God faithfully, so may he save you. Then Daniel was shoved into the dark den and a stone was placed over the entrance. Now we don't know exactly what Daniel felt alone in that deep dark place with prowling lions. But in the palace, the king was so sick with fear he couldn't sleep. As soon as the sun rose, he hurried back to the lion's den. Daniel, oh, you serve the living God. Has he been able to save you from the lion? Morning sunlight revealed Daniel, with the powerful lions curled up around him, tame as house cats. My God sent his angel to shut the mouths of the lions. They haven't hurt me at all. Oh. Lift him out of the den at once. Daniel was completely unharmed. The king was so amazed that he wrote a letter to everyone in the kingdom. I order people in every part of my kingdom to respect and honor Daniel's God. He is the living God. He has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. Daniel continued to serve the king. And because of Daniel's courage, every person in the land heard about the one true God. The end. A whole den full of lions. Daniel must have been so scared. Oh, for sure, but he could look back on the times that God had helped him. He trusted God to be with him no matter what. So, what's our part in this story? Well, okay, maybe your mom told you to take the trash to the curb hours ago, but you forgot and now it's dark. It might be tempting to just skip it, but you can trust God to be with you while you do it. Or maybe you have to give a book report in front of the whole class and it's your first time, so you're super nervous. It would be easy to just tell the teacher you lost your voice and can't quite do it. Yeah, but truth is you can trust that God is with you even in front of the class. Yeah, God knows we all struggle with fear sometimes. That's one of the reasons God gave us Jesus. When we believe in Jesus and follow him, we have God's spirit to help us face anything that comes our way, from a, a book report to a, to a barking dog to a, to a mean kid. I think we've got it. Thank you, Brian. See you next time. So here's the thing. You can do what you should because God is with you. Too bad Daniel didn't have this stuff to glow in the lion's den. Yeah, I don't think you can ever get that out of big cat fur. Uh. I, I don't think I'm ever going to get it off my hands. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. <laughs>